In today's show, you're gonna learn about Power Apps Random Text. So it turns out Power Apps doesn't have a random text function like I'd hoped. It has a random number function, it has a shuffle function for working with tables, but not just one when you wanna spit out different uh, text values randomly. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I made my own random text function and talk a little bit about the random functions that Power Apps does include. Should be a pretty short video, but first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to show you how to make your own Power Apps random string function. So over the years, you know, I've done nothing but troubleshooting. That's what I do. I help people with their problems, whether it's with Power Apps or SharePoint or PowerShell. Um, you know, it's the whole reason I made Power Apps 911, right? Help people like you with your problems. But one of the things I have to do a lot of times is recreate those problems, and I don't have your data, so I need to make my own data. So in the PowerShell space, you know, I've always been able to use the get rand function to create random uh, values to test with. And then I use the PowerShell to create SharePoint lists with random values, but I can't do that here in Power Apps. So in Power Apps, what I wanna do is I'm gonna walk you through today how I came up with my own random function. And along the way, I'm gonna teach you a couple of little tricks and show you some of the things that Power Apps does offer to uh, make that a little better for you. So it should be interesting, I hope. All right, so let's switch over here to my desktop. And so on my desktop, we're gonna to go to apps, and we will say create an app, and then we'll choose our good friend, the blank tablet layout. A couple seconds later, we will skip the welcome. All right, so what I wanted to do for this uh, project was I needed to create a table with some random data in it in order to you know, prove that I could take two uh, collections and merge them, So, which will be the next video I make because I think that's an interesting topic that uh, one of my customers asked, so I'll probably share that with you also. But I said, all right, I need some random text and unfortunately, Power Apps does not have a random text function. Right? If you go over here in your browser to the Power Apps uh, formula reference, and I just open up the page, I do a control F, I type in random, you'll see that there is a rand function which returns a pseudo random number, aka an almost random number, and it's a number between zero and one, and so then you can multiply it to you know, kind of get it in the number set you want. Um, so if you're working with numbers, that would work. But I don't want to do that. I want text, right? I want to be able to have the color red, the color blue, and the color green, and just randomly put each one of those in every time I press the button. So the next thing we did is I go down. So then there is a shuffle function. And so the shuffle function takes a table and randomly reorders it. I'm like, hmm, that seems kind of like the right answer. And so in the past, when people have asked me for this whole random text idea, I point on the shuffle but I never actually helped them figure it out. So today I said, all right, I'm going to figure this out, right? It's a Saturday, what else do I have to do? <laughs> Gosh, I need a life. Oh well. So let's go to our app and let's look at how I did this. So what we'll do is we'll put it on the screen in a label because that's always the easiest way to um, you know, visualize stuff. And then after that, we'll kind of, I'll show you more of the solution. And so what I needed to do was I need this idea of a random value. And so the first thing I needed was a table with the values I wanted. So what I did, right, is if you do this bracket, and we've shown this before, like on drop downs and stuff, right, you can make a table on the fly by doing the square brackets and then just typing in red and then blue and then green, just like that. All right, so that makes a table, which this control doesn't understand. Let's grab that real quick and we'll insert a drop down. And so like for my drop down here, if I say, all right, your items equals what I just typed there, then you can see that our drop down is red, blue, green, right? So this is where I use this syntax the most, is why I need to hard code the items in a drop down. That's the syntax for that. So if you haven't seen that before, there you go. There's your first bonus tip. Okay, so now that I've made a table, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our friend the shuffle function. So type in shuffle. And so shuffle just needs a source. Well, there's my source, so we'll just put parentheses around that. And so once again, that's not going to return the text that I need here, but it is going to shuffle those values. So if we grab that and put it in the drop down, maybe I should have stayed in the drop down the whole time. What do you do? So right now the order is red, blue, green. So if we do that, now the order is blue, red, green, right? And so every time that this one reloads, the items will come back in a different uh, randomized order because it's shuffling these records. So if you need to get a random record, or maybe you need to pull, do like uh, you got a list of names, you want to pull a random person out because they're the big winner of the prize, woohoo! Then shuffle function might work for you. 
But that's still not what we want, right? I want to be able to get the text out of there. So what I had to do is then I'm going to take advantage of the first function. And so the first function takes a source, right? Notice all these functions just take sources. And so the first function is going to do that, and it's still complaining. It's like, well, okay, I'll give you the first record, but if we hover over the error, it's still whining, right? It's like, hey, this property wants text, but this rule produces record values. No problem. We're smart kids. What are you going to do? We put a dot on the end here, dot value. Oh, look at that. Boom, red. So then now what's going to happen is every time this label is loaded, it's going to shuffle this table, and then it's going to uh, pull out the, whatever one is at the top of the table, it will pull it out and it'll get the value. That was the answer to my question of what I needed. So how can I prove to you this works? Well, I'm glad you challenged me. So let's grab that because we know that's good code. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a button and I'm going to call this um, collection one. And so what my collection one button is going to do is we're going to say make me a collection. So collect and we'll call it collection one. Very, very, very descriptive name. And then for the item, I'm going to say, all right, I want to have the favorite color equal that function. Close the curly braces, close a bracket, just like that. And so then now I'm making a collection. And so I'm going to put this in a data table real quick. So let's grab a data table, grab my collection. Just favorite color is all I got right now. Okay. So if we hit play, we click on collection, green, blue, red, green, red, red, blue, blue, right? So we're getting random data. Woohoo! So that was half my challenge, right? I needed a random favorite color in here. Pro tip, right? It's another pro tip. Notice here I called this favorite color. My first inclination was to call it just the word color. Try and avoid words like color and date and things like that. I yell at customers all the time about it because Power Apps has to figure out does he mean color as in like the color function that's built into Power Apps or does he mean color the name of this column over here? And while Power Apps has a steadfast set of rules for that, it's real easy for you to get confused as to which color it is. And so then you end up with weird error messages and things. So I try to never use names that Power Apps could mistake as its own function. So that's pro tip number two. We are kicking butt with pro tips. All right, so now what I wanted to do, right, to finish the little scenario that I'm trying to build up for here, so I actually needed two pieces of information. I needed an ID column and my favorite color. And so for the ID column, right, I could do that, and I would make ID one every time. Well, that doesn't really help because what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up having two collections with all the same IDs, and I want to merge them. And so I need them both to have uh, duplicate IDs. Right, so I can merge on the ID field. Got it? Got it. You'll see it in the next video. Okay, so then what did I do? I want to, I want to have uh, an incrementing ID number here. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say, all right, I want to do an update context, and I'm going to create a context variable called counter. Once again, I always want to call it count, but what's the problem with count? That's one of Power Apps' functions. Counter is not. So counter, and counter, we're just going to set it to counter plus one, right? You've seen me do this before probably, but so this will just the first time through the counter will be zero, so zero plus one is one, so counter will be one. The next time I click the button, counter will be one, and then it'll increment it to make it two. So then now we'll change this to be counter, like that. Oh, and you're smart, you know what's about to happen. Oh, nope, not what's about to happen. I wasn't smart. Let's go back over here to my data table. Hello, data table. I need you to show me my other column. Oh, well, let's click on the button one time so that we get the other column. Boom, there's an item. Go back to my data table. Show me my other one. I'm gonna be real honest, folks. I'm not a big fan of the data table because it does dumb things. I, I, I'm certain that it's me. You're probably staring at it right now saying, Shane, just click the button. I don't know what button to click. So delete the data table, insert, I don't ever use actual data tables. Every now and then a customer makes me use one. I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out. So there's ID, there's favorite color, boom. So we'll say play. No, and it's it's convinced there's no items to display, so it's got an error message. That's the other one we didn't delete. So see, and this is the weird thing about random, right? Randomly, red was the answer six times. 
it's not because anything's broken, it's just because shuffle is shuffle. I'm always shuffling three values. Apparently red is very popular. There's some greens. So uh, small data sets shuffle is not looking, uh, looking like a genius there. We'll delete that one out. There we go. So there you go. This simple little um, thing is exactly what I use in order to create myself a bunch of sample data because in the next video, I'm going to create two collections, collection one and collection two is going to have the same ID numbers, but it's going to have some different columns, and then we're going to make and merge those together. Um, so it should be fun. But hopefully this helps you because I don't know about you, but I was really excited when I finally figured this out. I've been asking the Power Apps team for months now that I wanted them to make me a random string function. And so this morning, I just, the light bulb came on, I sat down, I made us one. So what do you think of this? Do you have a better way that you do random texts? Is there something uh, you'd like to see me do differently? Do you know what my problem was with the data table? You can make fun of me and tell me that too. But I think that wraps this one up, right? I, I feel good about this. I set the foundation. We've got a random text function now. I'm going to add that to my OneNote so I don't lose it. And, you know, always feel free to reach out, right? Power Apps 91. This question came from um, a question from one of our customers. And so if you've got questions, send them to me. Worst thing I'm going to do is tell you to go away or ignore you altogether. No, that's not true. If you've noticed, all, I respond to all my comments. I respond to all the emails. Might not always be the answer you want. It usually is, though. So anyway, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and, you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.